Hi everyone, welcome to Maths World UK. I'm James Grime and today I'm speaking with Matt Parker. Matt's one of the world's top maths communicators. Uh, you can see him on YouTube, you can see his shows talking about maths, you can read his books. He really is everywhere and today Matt's brought in a, an activity that everyone can try. I, I don't want to spoil it but it involves a bit of origami, a pair of scissors and we're going to create some festive decorations. It's a fun activity that I can recommend for everyone. So I started our conversation by asking Matt about the difference between doing maths that is serious and useful and doing maths for fun. There's a whole idea in mathematics about how maths is um, unreasonably effective, like it's more useful than it deserves to be. And so I see those two things as being surprisingly separate when it comes to mathematics. But practically, if you enjoy it and you see the fun side and you do see that aspect of mathematics, which is, you know, uh, satisfying the human curiosity about how things work and patterns, then you're more likely to learn it, remember it, absorb it, not be afraid of it. And that means you're more likely to find it useful and do things with it. And you won't shy away from a career, which you otherwise find interesting, but you're like, oh, I have to do a bunch of mathematics as well. If you know that maths is also not that terrifying, then you can, more careers are open to you. So I say they're separate, but practically seeing the fun side of maths helps you learn and use it. Well, then that's a good setup for what we're going to do today. So I believe you brought in something for us to try out at home. What is it that you brought in to show us? I have brought some pieces of paper. So I'm going to be using A4 paper because that's what I have lying around the house. I suspect, James, you've probably got some A4 paper lying around. There you are. White. There you are. The standard choice. Um, I've gone uh, with yellow. I've also uh, got some uh, black bits of paper. So I um, love doing mathematics with stuff around the house. I love doing maths with bits of paper. And I try, whenever there's a festive occasion coming up, I try to find a fold and cut shape which I can make as part of whatever that celebration may be. And a classic one is a star. So I'm going to show you the star. You, you can follow along with your plain piece of paper. Okay. I'm also going to try, I'm going to angle my camera down so you can see what I'm doing. Here we go. So this is my bit of paper on my um, table. You can, uh, I'll zoom out a little bit. There you go. And um, to start with, I'm going to fold it in half. And if you haven't got A4 paper, if you're using a different ratio paper, as long as it's roughly the same, um, this will work. But everything I'm doing is kind of um, based on A4ness. So I folded it in half and I got it in front of me like, like a book. That's it. Excellent work. I'm now going to take the top corner up here on the spine of my book. So it's where the fold is. And I'm going to fold it down so it touches the bottom. And then the challenge here is I'm going to try and fold it. So you can see there's the total angle from this edge all the way around to this edge. And actually, I've got a pen here. So I'm going to, you wouldn't normally draw this on, but I'm going to just sketch it on so people know what I'm talking about. You've got, there's one edge there. There's your other edge over this fold, which I haven't committed to yet. So when I do fold that flat, I'm going to commit to some kind of line there. And then you've got where that bit of paper currently is sat. And I'm going to try and arrange it. So this little angle here, we'll call that A. I'm going to try and arrange it so that is exactly a third of the whole one B, which I've done. Is that up the right way from the point of view of the camera? That looks right. Absolutely not, but you can carry on anyway. Oh, how about this one? Oh, brilliant. There you go, double B. The great thing about A, very symmetric. I didn't have to worry about that one. So, because uh, of my camera's upside down and the footage might be flipped. Anyway, I want, um, this is now a, a, looks like an eight or something, right? I want this one to be roughly a third. And so what you do is you end up kind of just, you're swinging this one around until you're, you're happy that like there, it's too small. If I bring it over here, it's going to be too big. I move it around until I'm happy it's about a third. So you know what? Let's go with my first guess, which is probably terrible, but we'll try. We double check now by if we fold up 
this, well, I labeled as A, but you wouldn't actually write on it. If you fold that one up and fold it in, and then I fold it, oh, this one's too big, look at that. Oh, well, I was de if that was exactly a third, let's bring it back a little. Don't tell anyone I changed my mind as I went, right? Okay, now if I fold that one over, that's, oh, that's about right. Then I fold that one in. Oh, look at that, it lines up. Good enough, good enough. So I've got approximately, there you go. So you can see now I've roughly got, so these are all the same. So you fold that in and then you fold that over. Um, and that's the whole, that's the whole activity. You now get yourself a pair of scissors and we're gonna make one cut. So uh, I'm gonna cut off like the end, like a triangle. So have you got scissors or are you gonna have to tear this? I have scissors. Wow, you got a, the full range of stationery at your desk. That's impressive. Oh, nice. So I'm gonna make a snip like that. I'm gonna cut the end off. Is that an there angle you that you cut it at? At an angle, yeah, yeah. And I wasn't very specific about the angle because you can experiment with different angles. So the angle I happen to choose, if I unfold my bit of paper, you can see I've now got a five-pointed star. Look at that, All right? And so what have you got now on yours if you now unfold I mean, this, a bit of paper? This is a test of how good your instructions are. Hey, let's not make this my problem if it goes wrong. <gasps> it worked! Look at that, we Look got stars! That. Not only that, because we cut this out with one cut, the rest of the piece of paper will be a negative star. So there's uh, anti-star. Ah, oh, I clipped the edge of mine a little bit. Have you got a complete anti-star? Oh, yours, yours is much better, James. So there, there's my star and there's the negative star. And there's a thing called the fold and cut theorem where any shape, if it's made from straight lines, it's possible to fold a piece of paper and make a single straight cut and then you have that entire shape. I decided this was uh, Halloween a couple of years ago. I thought, you know what? I can do stars, which are fine for some holidays, but what about Halloween? And so that's why I got a bunch of black paper and I decided to try and work out how to do a fold and cut bat. So I'm gonna show you that now. I'm a little rusty, we'll see if it works. Okay, so we're going back down to desk view. Again, I started with an A4 piece of paper and I fold it in half like a book and I'm gonna put the spine up the top and I'm gonna kind of dog ear down one corner. And you can choose on what angle and how big a dog ear you put and that will change part of the final shape. I'm now actually gonna fold that backwards so it goes behind. So you can, it's still there, it's just it's on the back. Then you fold about a center meter of that forward. We have to imagine a line between that top bit of the crease and this bottom corner down here. I'm gonna fold it up. I'm probably going through these steps faster than you can follow along as I'm doing them. So you might either have to watch this back afterwards or we'll have some instructions um, linked below. I'm now gonna get the whole, you can think of this as like a, um, like a kite shape. I'm gonna turn the whole thing over and then I'm gonna fold from the top side corner to the top side corner, that whole bit back like that. And then I'm gonna take the one on this side. So over here is like the business end where we've got all those folds. I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna try and make it poke out by going underneath out the other. Oh, there it is. You can just see it sticking out over there. And I'm gonna, you can move it up and down. I'm gonna put it roughly in line with where the rest of these folds end, vaguely. So if I put that roughly there, flatten the whole thing out, and then all that's left now is to do our single cut. I'm gonna line the scissors up with that end of the piece of paper. So you can see the angle that's on, and I could slide the scissors up and down, keeping them parallel to that end. I'm gonna slide them until you can just see where the cardboard folds underneath right there. There's like a little mini triangle on the end and there's the end of it there. I'm gonna slide up parallel to the end until I hit that bit there. And then I'm gonna cut all the way through. And in theory, if I unfold this, I will have a bat. Hey! And for completeness, because the rest of it uh, was a single cut out the middle, I've now got Negative bat. Oh, negative bat. Even more terrifying than the real bat.
the reason I was reasonably quick on that and all the instructions will be linked below if people want to actually try it but what was almost more fun than making them was working out how to make them and I enjoyed playing around with how if I change how I'm cutting things how the shape changes so when we did the star when you cut that bit off at the end if you change the angle you cut you change how pointy the star is and if you change little bits of making the bat it changes the shape of the wings or the shape of the ears or I mean in my case I've got a very small tail if I'd been more careful I could have got a much bigger tail and I started by just drawing a shape of a bat on a piece of paper a symmetric one and then working out how I could fold all the lines of the bat one on top of the other so I could cut through them all at once and then those are the instructions, that, that's how I found it. And all those instructions you said we're gonna make available, we'll put them in the description, all of that, so people can try this at home. And I like the idea that you can explore this at home as well, which is what we want people to do. And uh, just before we finish, is there anything that you would like to plug, promote before we go? Obviously I want people to check out the instructions for making these things. We'll link to them below, you can search for them online. There is a video on my Stand Up Maths YouTube channel of me making the bat if you want to check that out. And my book, Humble Pie, either a comedy of maths errors if you're in the UK, or when math goes wrong in the real world, if you're in the US, is available from all adequate bookshops. Thanks, Matt. I don't think there's much more for me to say, except I can recommend Matt's books. And we do hope that you have fun making shapes. Uh, so for now, I'll say stay curious, and I'll see you next time.